You're listening to the Valley Current. Why do you think so far there hasn't been any sort of public company that's picked up on this? Like you are essentially are doing stuff that's ahead of where Analytica should be. I think Analytica could presumably, aren't they a public company? No, 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 no. no. Analytica is not. I know the owner. And for example, we're seeing some big advantages there of them doing it, by the way. Right. Just in work we're doing with a utility company. I mean, if I were them, I would just to sell Analytica, I would be like trying to get you to license this to, to them to set up a way for them to basically show the power of Analytica, right? Or is yes. that crazy? No, it's not at all crazy. That's what that that's what this website does right here. Right. Absolutely. But but Jack, it's a chicken and egg problem. Right. Okay. A great analogy is let's go back to probability and electricity. Okay. Right. So this is Monte Carlo simulation, but it's it's Monte Carlo encapsulated into data. Mm -hmm. Right. The simplest way to think about that is just that I rolled a bunch of dice. Right. Let me, let me let me show you the dice. The dice are an important example. This is the this is the old thing that, that we did. Okay. So so here I've represented the dot the dice as rolling dice 10,000 times. These right. three columns of numbers go down 10,000 times. That was the direct current approach. Now, right. that's what Monte Carlo simulation is about. But 25 years ago, I realized I love Monte Carlo. It's so great. But the biggest problem, and now it works in native Excel, by the way. So that this was a huge breakthrough, which, which got us off the ground in 2013. Okay. But right there, I just rolled a die 10,000 times. Here, control Z, I unrolled it. Control Y, I re-rolled a die 10,000 times in native Excel. There's this thing called the data table that allows me to do this in Excel. Now I'm gonna roll two dice, and there are more sevens than anything else, so it goes up in the middle. Again, minus 10,000 trials, I'm back to one die. So if you think with dice, any of us could figure out how to calculate these numbers, it's a one, it's a five, it's a two, right? But yeah. if we're talking about the sales of some new product, I don't know what that distribution is. I don't know how to generate those numbers. My, my marketing statisticians figure that out. And they've got to do the simulation because I don't know how to use, I don't know what number to use. I'm the marketing manager, but I don't know how to do, generate those random numbers. So this light bulb went off like 25 years ago. It was in my office. I flipped the light switch on and the light bulb went off. You know, big deal. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal. I didn't know how to generate the electricity, but I was using a light bulb. What a concept. Mm -hmm. It turns out there's something called the power grid, you know, power distribution. The experts generate it. They send it over the power grid to me. I turn my light on. And I said, why couldn't we do this with probability distributions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what's taken all this time. But trust me, before there was a power grid, there was no demand for light bulbs. Mm -hmm. And before there were light bulbs, there was no demand for electricity. In mm -hmm. other words, it's a chicken and egg situation. Right. Very common in what the economists call network effects. Right. We are now on the cusp. And this is what's so exciting. We are right at the point now where, oh, yeah, find the chances you, your hospital overflows. Find the chance your plane will fly more than five hours. All this stuff is now available over an open public standard of data. And so I'm expecting it to explode at this point. I, I, and so are others. I mean, I'm working with other people, too, who see the potential explosion here. We, there's great excitement around the shop these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great excitement. Great. But that doesn't mean around, great that doesn't excitement around the world, right? That, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, f you know, I've got people calling me for consulting from Germany and stuff. And with Zoom, hey, it's just as easy to consult in Germany as it is anywhere else. Um, that doesn't mean we don't want the $200,000 grant to go after the 
collaborative pandemic modeling, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I mean, we've got a great group. I think I can call people in from, from some pretty big universities into this and, and from at least two healthcare organizations, maybe, I think three healthcare organizations. That is, if we had enough, if we had funding to hire someone to manage it and keep track of it all and, and uh, basically curate whatever best practices we came up with and make them available and so on. Uh, again, the first application of electricity was really the light bulb, right? But very quickly, it's running electric machinery in factories and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, again, I don't want to get into the technicalities, but the, the AC, the alternating current, I am one of three people involved in that. There are three technologies absolutely independent of each other it took all three to get to AC. Roughly, you could think of them as, mm-hmm. I, I invented the AC standard. Someone else invented the alternating current generator. That might be like a Tesla or something, right? Mm-hmm. Someone else invented the transformer, which means you can transform that 60 cycle AC current into you know thousands of volts or 120 volts or whatever you want. So, the 60 cycle standard, the generator and the transformer are the, the big three of our technology stack, all developed by, you know, the other two really, really brilliant guys who didn't even know each other. And, you know, I introduced everybody and, and the, the nonprofit served as the catalyst at which this happened. Right. So, I mean, really, the. I think our quixotic days are mostly behind us, except most people just think you're nuts if you say, well, we got the Hindu Arab renewables of uncertainty. That sounds pretty quixotic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you really have to demo it. And um, I, there are potential killer apps. And, and think of stuff with cryptocurrencies and right. modeling the uncertainty of cryptocurrencies. Just, just for a little hint of stuff. That well, you I saw a startup recently that's doing kind of all this betting stuff and analysis of odds. And I thought to myself, man, they should be like double and triple check- checking this stuff with you at probability management because- I would think so, yes. Right? Although they, they might be doing it off of gambling. Look, they all fit together. The, 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 the prediction markets, mm-hmm. the prediction markets can help inform what we're doing and we can help inform the prediction markets. Right. Uh, you know what? It, this might be the age of of chance. You know, you you sent me that article in Forbes by Tim Beharon, right? right. I, I have yet to contact him about this. I wanted to be right. have all my ducks aligned, right. but he talks about when when VisiCalc came out. Is anyone? I, I, anyone old enough to remember Lotus One Two Three? Well, before Lotus One Two Three was VisiCalc, the first ever spreadsheet. Right. And Tim Beharon in this Forbes article talks about how people were doing in 15 minutes what used to take them like 40 hours. Mm -hmm. Imagine with pencil and paper. Well, we're doing in 15 minutes what they can't do at all. I think in a way this is a bigger breakthrough than the first spreadsheet. This is the arithmetic of uncertainty. You think Stanford is going to start? I mean, I know you teach at Stanford, but I'm not sure if you you're teaching this at Stanford. Are you? I'm kind of curious. I am. Yes, I teach. I teach. Yes. Well, not only that, not only that, and I've got to upgrade my course to AC. I have an edX Stanford course that teaches probability management. Oh, okay. And that course was launched a year ago, and has had I think three thousand people sign up. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's really Um, good. And then I teach a course in the um in, in the civil engineering department i i sort of landed that gig because of the work we've done in a big power utility where it's very applicable right so uh, but i'm telling you uncertainty is applicable everywhere right and that's perhaps one of the problems is you want to start someplace where you you know a friend of mine used to say you got to be big somewhere right well, yes you do but you really can't in one sense, until we get the Hindu Arabic numerals iced, which we've finally done now with a 3.0 standard, right? That's got to be right, or you just can't go anywhere because anything you do is now going to become obsolete, right? When the, when the when the numerals get updated, we're now at the point where the numerals are frozen. So 
in the next five years, Sam, are we going to be treating this almost like we treat electricity where you just plug in and essentially you can get so much more distribution data to inform decisions and then your software yeah. or other software will basically take it from there? Right. Any place that someone wants to know the chance of either meeting their goals or incurring a risk. Right. They will be using our standard or something like it. And I don't know of anything like it, but I mean, presumably if it evolves, right, it'll, there's lots of room for evolution here. Mm -hmm. And hey, if we turn out, if, if even this turns out to be DC and we find some other thing that's even better, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I mean, I would, if someone came to me tomorrow with another standard for doing this that worked better than ours, I'd be all over it. I'd say, oh man, I got consulting clients who need this stuff. It took much longer than I thought but it's been on a constant upward exponentially growing slope and and we feel just a number of us now that this thing is about to really really take off and you were in on the beginning more or less yeah. right you were you were you were you know the on the on the beginning of the 501c3 nonprofit being founded which was when we really knew it would work well i think the other thing you've done and you don't realize it i think you've given new purpose uh to his work in san diego because i don't think he ever imagined I mean, you tell me what you think oh harry he's, yeah he's in his 90s isn't he yes he is he is but but harry won a nobel prize his right. stuff is all over wall street we right. no no it it i'm sure already surpassed his wildest dreams we've moved these wall street ideas to main street right or what do you call the, the factory neighborhood of town, you know, to, to, to factory row? Because um, uh, you, you can imagine now, if you're an aircraft manufacturer, for every nut and bolt, keeping track of how long that nut and bolt will work before it fails, right? right. You don't have to do it with every nut and bolt, right. you know? But, but the key ones you do, right? The, the generators and the engine parts and things, you do need to keep track of those. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we've made that easy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, I would think you would get almost instant traction with all the defense contractors. Like I would think yes. they'd want to be all over this. Well, here is, here, here is a reason why not. Okay. Certainly the one is. So I don't know, is your show rated PG or, or is it, yeah, so we're, like, we're X-rated, man. We're we're, okay, okay, we're well, whatever, you wanna, whatever you want to okay. say goes. Well, here. Okay, okay. So here, here's you no, no, I, of speech in a big way. I, I learned. No, I learned. I learned this the other day. Yeah. So you can use the f bomb in a PG-13 movie. Yeah, if they say f bomb, if you, right? If you use it twice, it moves you to R. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't I'm know that. I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I. Neither did I. I was looking up the Martian movie. I love the Martian you know, um, with Matt Damon. Right? Right. Right. I mean, that's right. why we had to go back and rescue the poor bastard. It was right. Matt Damon, for God's sake. <laughs> right? <laughs> so anyone else, they would have left him up there. So so I take you back to 1199 in Italy, the place of your ancestry. Oh, Fibonacci? Right? Are we going back yeah. to Fibonacci? Fibonacci? We're going back to Fibonacci. Right. He's walking down the street in 1199 saying, I get this. My knee is own business. My no, 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 not at all. He's a huckster. No, 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 no. He's a huckster. He's okay. a huckster. Okay. He's saying, gather around, folks. Uh, I got this great new way. He does it this way. I got to, I got to this great new way to communicate and calculate with numbers, right? With the numbers, yes. Yes. Numeri, numeri. And, and so, you know, like 80% of the population says, what's a number? This is 1199 yep. in right. Italy, right? Right. Um, but the banking regulators and the accountants and those people know what numbers are. Right. And they say to Fibonacci, uh, can't you see we're busy? We have only six days to add up this column of Roman numerals. Right. And Fibonacci says, guys, my way is so much faster. Mm -hmm. and, and they say, fuck you. We bill by the hour. <laughs> right. And, and then he's, and, and then he says, and it's so much more transparent. And, and they say, and the horse you rode in on, why do you think our rates are so high? Right. So right. 
Most places we go, there are people using Roman numerals and charging an arm and a leg. Right. Yeah. And that, of course, is something. That, yes. So eventually it caught on. Oh, I got to tell you this. You're a lawyer. You're going to love this. You're a goddamn lawyer. You're a goddamn lawyer. You're going to love this. So that was 1199. As late as maybe 100 or 200 years later. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I have to show you a. I, I have to show you a, uh, I have a graphic for this. So let's get, let me open my whiteboard. I'm going to use my whiteboard for this. To, 100 or 200 years later, they tried to outlaw Hindu Arabic numerals right. in Florence, right? Well, that's still those guys agitating with the Roman numerals, right? Right. And so I've done some expert testimony. I, I, I wish I could. Because I knew how to rebut this case. I wish I'd been able to do it. So here's what they said. So the, the, the reason they went outlaw is they say, yeah, let's look at the number three. They say, you can't trust these, these Arabic numerals. Look, a guy could take that three and turn it into an eight. We can't have that, right? Okay. This would have been my rebuttal. Oh, what a perfect rebuttal. And I would have said, are you kidding me? So here's a three, the way you guys are doing, you're saying some jerk couldn't come up and do that and turn it into an eight? Right. Or is it the other way around? I think he has to put it on the other side, right? right. I'm not good with my Roman numerals, but that's all it takes. I think you stick a V in front of it, right? So it was a struggle, even for Fibonacci. Right. Uh, but it was so vastly superior. What we you are know, doing is- You know so how he came, did he, did he write about how it is that this occurred to him? Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. What's the story? His dad, the story, the backstory is his dad was either a diplomat or a businessman living in Algeria. Okay. So little Fibonacci grew up with Arabs teaching him math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how, mm -hmm. right? And he's looking at the stuff, he gets back to Italy, he's saying, oh, you guys, you got to stop these Roman numerals, right? And they had counting sticks, they had all kinds of, they had abacuses, and uh, that was the story. And he was very, very diligent about promoting it and consulting around it. But uh, you know, I have to point out that the Fibonacci sequence was just part of his public relations shtick. And uh, that's why I call him a huckster. He was selling this stuff. He wasn't an impassioned uh, uh, observer. Uh, you know, uh, uh, he was uh, he was in it. Mm hmm. So that's the story from here. Story. You cover that story in your book. Tell people about your book. I, I, know I, I do. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. So, okay. So the new book is coming out. Right. So the original book was, I'm embarrassed to show that I got my Roman numerals wrong here. Yeah, that's okay. The goes on that side, right? I see that. So just put it in the mirror. That's so, it. The original book was The Flaw of Averages. It's a great book, by the way. And it's really readable that is it's not technical and it's enjoyable and it's got some funny cartoons in it so it's highly recommended highly and, recommended and, and and the next book is called chanceification that's even better curing curing the flaw of average call it california chanceification so it's <laughs> like california californication do you know that yeah, could, TV maybe. Show, californication <laughs> you call it california chanceification or Silicon Valley chanceification. That would be even better. Uh, too, that's too limiting. I, anyway, it's going to come limited. out. It's going to come out as an ebook okay. because that way I keep and and, and you know it's going to be promoting the nonprofit and right. when, uh, when's, when's it coming out? When's well, it is it is written, and we're now just converting it to the EPUB format. Okay. So I'm expecting certainly within the month. Nice. Right, and I'll I'll let you know when that happens. Gosh, Sam, you're such a productive 50 year old i have to say you've been 50 50 let's try 76 here for god's sake you're right? you are looking super young and super uh virile and you are obviously a idea machine in this area yeah, and you, the pandemic the pandemic has been great for me that's an interesting, I, I that's an, more that's I an interesting observation people took this pandemic some of them took it poorly and then a few of us, like you and I, probably became stronger and more resilient as a result. Yeah, I mean, just just so much. 
Well, and it came at a good time when so many things were coming together, right? right. I mean, you know, my motto is, you know, not, none of my successes have been planned and none of my plans have been successful. Yes. And, yes. But there's an important corollary by Louis Pasteur that chance favors the prepared mind. Right. And I had been preparing. So this really does go back. Really, 25 years of thought have gone into this. Right. 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 And certainly the beginning, quixotic. But I mean, you know, a windmill turns into a great big company paying you right. a few million dollars over several years. That's enough. To, then you keep going back, even if you don't get the rewards, right? You get a right. reward like right. that once or twice. You say, oh, mm -hmm. there really is something here, right? Well, so, Sam, I want to congratulate you. I think you've really added value to the world. I hope that Dan Faustra sees this because Dan, of course, has a company that's sort of in this area, but I don't know. No, no, very know. much. Oh, very wait a minute, wait a minute. I think of Dan, what Dan has done mm -hmm. is, let, let's, let's call him maybe a Westinghouse or someone right. who has built now the first power generator at Niagara Falls. Right. That did it. It was 1895. And Westinghouse built a generating plant, a hydroelectric generating plant at Niagara Falls. Right. But all the usual suspects were involved. Tesla was there. Even, even Edison, whose DC had just gotten clobbered. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They let him build the power lines or something. So all the, the big three were in there. Tesla, Westinghouse, um, uh, and Edison. Yeah, we're uh, talking about the actual guy, Tesla, not the not the company. Not the car. No, no. The, the guy the, guy the car is named end. after. Right. But it's interesting because that sort of has flowed, that whole sort of point of electricity and the value of electricity has flowed right okay. down to the vehicle level. But the point I want to make about Dan is but for Dan Faustra and his startup, which at the time started as the name of it was personal software. Then we changed the name to Visicorp and Gordy Davidson over at Fenwick and West, formerly David Stafford Kelman and Fenwick knows the story really well, which is that uh, Dan had a close partnership with Frankston and Brooklyn over at Software Arts. They were the engineers. Faustra was the designer and the user interface uh, experience guy and the marketer. And, but for his work in getting physical out in the marketplace, we would not be where we are. And further, Apple would not be where it is. Apple computer, the way in which they sold those original pizza box, Apple two sixty-five hundred two 6502 microprocessor computers is because of physical on those computers. Physical got to that Apple, little Apple II computer, the pizza box people forget about, the Woz, the machine Wozniak designed before it got to the IBM PC. Oh, absolutely. And they essentially trounced IBM in a huge way. And, and literally the people at Apple should be paying homage to Dan Foster. He doesn't get the kind of credit, nor does Frankston and Brooklyn. They're still around. I think Frankston works for IBM now. And I think Brooklyn's involved with a nonprofit or with the yeah. electronic freedom frontier or something. Yeah. I mean, these people are still around. I want to have them on my show at some point because they really do tell the story of how this industry really got supercharged and momentum. And these trillion dollar companies got created as a result of essentially the shoulders of these guys that they stood on. Really. If you look absolutely. At Absolutely. Dan Faust also founded Byte Magazine. Right. And, uh, right. And, 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 and I want to point out, you know, some of your users have, have used the Excel solver, which comes with every copy of right. Excel. Right. Um, but, but here's the, you know, co-founded Visicorp. Uh, right. So, so, the, you know, this has not been, not been his, his first rodeo by any means. No. And it's, it was very, very thrilling when he said, I, I'd like to support this. Right. It was also very scary for me. Right. Well, I, I do have a PhD in computer science, but I don't know anything about the subject. I was doing other stuff, applied math stuff. You do the you do the high level stuff. Let somebody else do the. Program. Oh man, it, no, this it was hard, but we we made it, and they they did an excellent job, and it's just so powerful. Right, we'll do another show. Yeah, exactly. Worth exactly. Show. I'll 
I'll, I'll suggest we close with this thought, which is at some point, I do think that Apple and even IBM and even to some extent, Google and certainly Microsoft should actually give contribution to your nonprofit and should get Dan Falstra to be part of the nonprofit in an even a bigger way. Yeah. Because yeah. I tell you, but for what VisiCalc did to motivate people to use, I know it. there would not be the kind of personal computer industry or it would have taken a lot longer to get Yes, yes, yes. Because that. the other things were not as good. There was something they called Maker. It was no, horrible. No. It, the, it was the first killer app. Yes, it was the first killer app. And in some ways, it really motivated everything that followed. Everything that followed. The of word course. Processing that of course. Followed, the, everything that followed. I mean, there are people who say, well, word processing existed. But this idea of, hey, you're going to have a spreadsheet with the word processor. They're going to be in Windows. You're going to move the Windows around. You're going to cut and paste from one to the other. You're going to create a composite document. I mean, that all stemmed out of the original idea of we've got to make it easy for people to calculate and things have to dynamically on the screen. Yes, yes. Yeah. What's going on. Well, and you know what? So the word processing would have been limited to typists. Yes, exactly. It made their life a lot easier. That's right. Now, there's an irony here, though. So the spreadsheet, suddenly you've got analysts and managers, but there is there is a real irony. When they were uncertain about a number, they'd plug in their best guess, and that became a contagion vector for the flaw of averages. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So yeah. the disease that was caused by spreadsheets, well, yeah. the cure the cure was way worse than, than you know, the side effects, but yes. one of the side effects was the flaw of averages. Well, now we fixed that. Great. So, well, so, Sam, yeah. I look forward to the book. I, 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 as soon as you get it loaded in a review copy, please send oh, it. Yeah. Over. We'll send the link over to probability management on the show notes. And I will also put a mention of frontline solvers and the link. There. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The anal the, it's called the, yeah, and it's, the thing is called the analytics solver to to distinguish it from the simply Excel native solver. It, it's very powerful. It does data mining. It does all kinds of crazy things. Right. And uh, and it's it's really powerful. Hey, thanks, Sam. Thanks for being on. I look forward to seeing you, you next week. I'll give you a call. Thanks very Good much. Deal. Tune in next time on the Valley Current.